Go to bed. Hello and welcome to something that isn't just uh, whatever it is that this is. It's something a little bit different. I have just downloaded the Electric Dreams demo and it has one of the simplest ways to explain quad ambiences that I just had to make a video about it. Uh, I got really excited by this because quad ambiences are something that I find still a little bit confused in the industry. Um, obviously the demo looks amazing. I would love to play with the car thing, but it's not here and that's okay. Um, and there's some Niagara stuff. So I think I'm gonna do a couple of videos on this before I get back to the uh, Metasounds tutorials of Unreal Engine 4 beginners. Now, the Electric Dreams demo uh, specifically features a lot of work for PCG, the Procedural Content Generation Framework. Um, and I think it is, I think it's, gorgeous. I think it's amazing. I'm always so excited to play with procedural content generation and playing with a couple of ideas in this space. But today I'm going to cover some of the beautiful ambiences that are in uh, this title, specifically the quad ambience. Now a quad ambience, if you're not aware of what a quad ambience is, is basically a front left, front right, or front left, front right, um, front uh, and back left or rear left, rear right. And these sides add a lot of distinction, have a lot of uh, elements and they're they're really purposeful. They're really easy to use. They cut down spot ambiences a little bit um, or the manual placement of spot ambiences. But something the Electric Dreams demo does really, really well is use both. So we're gonna go through some of these different elements. Now you can see there are some spot ambiences, particularly littered around right at the start, um, and these spot ambiences are positional point sources that are around um, uh, the area. And as we sort of zoom out, you'll see some of the PCG volumes, and you won't see too many um, audio things floating around or anything, because uh, it is purely for driving, um, the, ver the very start of that driving area. So. This PCG area um, is, you know, recombinates, and I don't think it does that for audio. Um, I don't think the audio is attached to particular components. I believe it's all authored, but uh, it's still pretty cool uh, anyway. So each of these uh, sound sources uh, just has a really small um, piece of logic with it that uh, plays particular uh, behavior, plays a particular meta sound from a distinct time and just loops around. And so there are only two types. There is the ambience player and the spot ambiences. Now the spot ambiences are just looking for one here. Um, just around the corner, if I just maybe find one in the list here. Right, so these spot ambiences, you can see they're kind of nestled into little, little corners and little corridors um, just to make it kind of interesting in that way. So these spot ambiences add a lot of detail, they add little little leaf creaks and things like that. And then there's the ambience players. And these ambience players are where the real meat and potatoes happens, the quad ambiences that play. Now you'll see if you search for ambient sound, you won't find one because it is part of a meta sound asset. And so if I move to this uh, spot, uh, spot effects because we'll cover the spot effects first and then we'll move from the spot effects into the uh, other component. So if we click on these, I can open a, uh, a an ambience container which just has a wave assets, an array of wave assets for different uh, versions of the spot effects. And then these are populated uh, at the start. Then we open up the ambient spot and we can see that essentially it takes that wave assets. We pick one at random. We make sure that we don't repeat the previous uh, previous three. Uh, we pick one, we get the duration, we start from a random spot. It is a looping ambience, so having something so it doesn't always start from exactly the same spot might be really helpful. And then from there we move ahead to our wave player and we play them. There is a, an, a small ADSR envelope on this too, where we just have a very short fade in, fade out time just to smooth out um, some of that and we're multiplying that as an output. And that's the whole spot ambience, which I think is pretty cool. Now these are, by the way, done by Gustav Rothman of uh, Sweet Justice, um, really cool company, doing some pretty cool stuff, kind of popped out of nowhere on this one, um, where they were working on, yeah, this special projects um, for Unreal. So um, big props, uh, check out Sweet Justice's work. So we've done the spot prefix, let's look at the ambience. This blueprint is a little bit bigger, um, it's nothing too scary, but if you click on that edit blueprint action, you'll see it kind of opens up uh, quite, a lot of, um, quite a lot of components. So I think it's worth closing quite a few of those down. 
um, and just ensuring that we uh, can see stuff. You can see a bunch of functions and a couple of macros, a couple of variables, and this is for all, pretty much exclusively for picking the left, the right, the rear left and rear right parts of these components. So you can see here, if I sort of find one of these, they're all sort of central because they um, you're, you're aiming to go past them and through these almost volumes um, and, and be transitioning into each quad. So you can see you'll have a front left, a front right, a rear left and a rear right part of these quads. Um, I really encourage you to have a play with the format. It really translates quite nicely into ambisonics um, if you're interested in ambisonics a little bit later. Right, the spot ambience is dead not quads um, I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times but the, the interplay is what makes them a cool system so going back into the blueprint we can see we have a couple of pieces of logic the first up the tick logic basically goes through and is updating the position of the camera um, with reference to where we're um, facing so we're looking at the yaw for the angle of the camera and we're getting just a base player camera. It, there might be some special stuff that needs to happen here. We're getting the camera location because we're going to use this to turn on and off uh, separate parts of these um, areas from the box that's triggered. So this box itself in the viewport here. When we're within that box, we're going to trigger this uh, distance or we're going to check the distance to that box, I should say. And uh, when we do that, we'll be able to turn on and off uh, these components because they're all overlapping, all dynamic. So the closest point on collision will give us where the camera location is to the box and how far away the box is okay next up we're going to move into the calculate distance volume multiplier this is to essentially make attenuation but do it quickly so uh, this is really cool i like this a lot um, we map the range of the distance to the box of, as a zero to one and then set it as a volume multiplier so it's all a linear interpolated feature there's a little bit of debug stuff here and there um, in this project as well we don't really care that much about the debug stuff um, for for this uh, yeah this fade distance uh, stuff of whether or not uh, whether or not we're fading or whether we're starting to fade away from the box and uh, and that kind of thing here right so you can already see how this is kind of working it means we don't have to place attenuation sources on everything because we're linearly interpolating away from them which i think is pretty cool so next up we're working out the higher priority volumes to work out the volumes that are you know, shouldn't be replaced, um, whether they need to be turned up or turning down other volumes if they can be replaced. These higher priority volumes are really important for opening into the clearing of the space or opening into a part of uh, a part of the map that you really don't want to drop off. And again, it's, it's a way to do priority without doing that. Next up, we have the sound. Um, we turn on or off the sound based on the volume multiplier. We set the volume multiplier based on the box distance. You're sort of seeing a pattern here. I think Gustav did a really cool job here um, in this technical implementation, if they're the person that did the implementation. Um, the camera distance to box, fade distance. We map the range. We have that as a volume multiplier based on the distance. This is all to replace the attenuation part. Next up, we set it in world align parameters, and this is one that I really, really enjoy. So this is to calculate the azimuth and the elevation and to crossfade each of the sources. So we have this camera your perspective, and we have a two trigonometric functions and then the inverse trigonometric function, um, which actually gets us our four directions, which I think is really, really cool. Each of these is literally just uh, multiplied against negative one to go the inverse side and get you your two different versions, which then basically takes a distance and will be able to crossfade between um, each of the sources. So you can see these cos and the sine um, functions, they're actually the same. They're just the same direction, but then inverted. We map each of those to a gain parameter that we're going to then pass into the MetaSounds application so that we get our directions for free, which I think is a really cool way of doing, you know, uh, as I said, just just really simple way to, to do quad ambiences. So if you've ever been afraid of quad ambiences, this is actually all it is. This is actually all of it, whether you're using Metasounds or not. We're passing in the Metasound parameter, um, or the parameters for the four gains into the Metasound. And um, 
Yeah, that's 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 it. That's the blueprint logic. So inside the MetaSound, we're passing each of the gains, the elevation, the azimuth, um, the asset, and the final gain for a, a volume multiplier all the way into this uh, ambience quad um, MetaSound patch. And then we're taking out of a uh, of a yeah an, an output for front left, front right, uh, side left and side right, or rear rear left and rear right, depending on. Um, what you like to call them, I suppose. So inside this, uh, there's actually this stuff down the bottom. We don't really need this at all. Um, so we don't really care about that. But you will see uh, we have pretty much the same thing as the spot ambience and that we're taking a random time and playing it from a random time and having a quad uh, player for the wave player instead. And then there's this kind of sub or down mix matrix of front left, front right, rear left, or side, side left, side right. And uh, you can see the gains that were passed in a little bit earlier um, are used to multiply those out. We have a linear gain function just for a final gain feature so that we can measure this in decibels and uh, just kind of give the whole ambience thing a bit of an amp um, or, or reduction, I suppose. So when I turn these, uh, these inputs up and I'm kind of just emulating the position of the camera um, and the position of what we'd be looking at in elevation and, and that kind of thing, um, I'm just gonna add a bass sound here. Right, and here we go. Okay, there we go. So you can see I actually have these channels uh, exporting in this quad now, and uh, we have something we can play with. So if I turn a few of these down, you can see that the way that the matrixing is working, the way that the submixing down into the mono mixes works, we get this positional um, or this four layered uh, positional direction stuff, which I think is, is just really cool. It's a really simple way to add uh, quad ambiences to um, a project. So it's, uh, yeah, it's super simple. It's really fun. I think it's uh, it's definitely given me an excuse to jump in and do some more quad stuff um, because I've been so used to thinking I need ambisonics renderers and all the rest of it um, that I hadn't really considered that you can, of course, just make it yourself. Now, they're not really using elevation or uh, azimuth here in, in from the Unreal side. As far as I can tell, I could be wrong. I just poked around and I got really excited by this and wanted to make a video. So I think that's essentially what, um, that's essentially what I wanted to cover today. The, the, this is a throwing down the gauntlet to use some quad ambiences in some of your work. They help to fill out a space and then you can have spot ambiences within that space. And I think this is a very, very clear delineation of how to do that. Um, it's a really beautiful demo and obviously there's a fresh, beautiful side of PCG uh, on the way that I think is going to be super exciting. Uh, it already is really exciting of, of checking um, what PCG is going to bring to Unreal Engine. And I think you should download this demo and have a play around. Um, I would. There's also a talk, I think it's at 11 PST tomorrow um, or today, whenever your time frame is, um, I'll put a link to uh, the pre-GDC talk that uh, Dan Reynolds has promised um, over over there. And um, yeah, I think you should put some put some quad ambiences in your work and listen to the beautiful demo. So for more on what I'm doing, follow me at dweaveraudio on Twitter um, or check out weaveraudio.com where I have a an ambience uh, emulation from some of the beautiful Australian ambiences that uh, I have available that you can kind of fall to sleep to it, um, have a listen to some of the beautiful sounds. I'm a really big ambience nerd, as you probably can tell from making a 15 minute video on ambience, um, but um, I've, I've got that. And I've also been working on a resource atlas for some of the game audio tips, tricks, tools, and articles that I think are really fantastic. There are a lot of nodes that still need to be filled in on the website, but I thought I'd put it up anyway. Um, thanks for checking this video out and I'll catch you next time.